want to cross over now to Tripoli, Libya's capital, uh, and our correspondent, Frederick Pleitkin, who actually broke the news, and he was there at the press conference uh, where this announcement was made. Uh, Fred, uh, we are hearing that, and we were seeing pictures on Libyan state TV, uh, that uh, there are uh, massive crowds there. There we see those massive crowds uh, at uh, Gaddafi's compound. Yeah, that's the Bab al Azizia compound, really, too, which is, of course, here in downtown Tripoli, and it appears as though uh, uh, there is quite a substantial crowd there. Now, what we have to note is that there are actually people at that compound every night ever since NATO's action, of course, against the Gaddafi regime has begun. It appears, however, uh, and it sounds to us, because we can hear all this from our position as well, as though these crowds are much larger than they would be normally. And also, uh, at this time of night, you can hear gunfire reverberate around the city, quite massive gunfire also a lot more uh, than you would uh, on a regular night. So it does seem as though uh, the people definitely know about this news, and it does seem as though it has stirred some emotions, as I can tell you. It did also at the press conference where government spokesman Musa Ibrahim uh, broke the news that apparently uh, Saif al-Arab uh, Gaddafi had been killed uh, in that airstrike, he said. Now, of course, we have to note, we don't have any sort of confirmation from any other source, from NATO or from any other source of that. And of course, he also said that Muammar Gaddafi himself was apparently uh, at that compound as well. But again, uh, no confirmation on that either. Elisa? And we hear uh, some also some gunfire as, as you're speaking. Uh, give us a sense of, uh, of what is happening, of whether you're hearing a any overflights, any new airstrikes. Well, the interesting thing, Relitza, was that after this, this, this airstrike happened, and it was a very large airstrike, it happened right near the place uh, where we're at, and certainly it seemed to us as though the ordinance that was used uh, was very, very large. It was a very large bang that happened. We were then brought compound afterwards, I would say about an hour and a half after this airstrike happened, and you could still hear NATO planes circling overhead. Now, it's unclear what they did, whether or not they might have been surveying the damage, uh, whether or not these were uh, planes that were actually on some other mission, maybe uh, looking for other military targets uh, in that area, but certainly you could still hear the NATO planes overhead. There are no NATO planes overhead at this point in time. There's no planes that we can hear in the air here. All we hear, of course, is the gunfire here around town, which comes from various locations. Tripoli is, of course, a fairly large city with about two million inhabitants, but also one that simply from the size uh, that it covers is also a very large city. And we can hear that uh, gunfire going on uh, now about, I would say, about four hours after this uh, airstrike took place, really. So. And Fred, what can you tell us about uh, uh, Saif al-Arab al-Qaddafi, uh, Colonel Qaddafi's youngest son, who uh, was killed in this airstrike. Uh, we have not heard much from him. He has uh, uh, maintained a relatively a low profile. We do not even have a picture of him. This is not the safe al-Islam Qaddafi from whom we've been hearing. He's the most visible face of this regime, uh, a, a former a person who was formerly considered to be a reformist who's been uh, out there in front of the media defending. Uh, his father's regime. This is the youngest brother, 28, 29 years old. What, what do you know about him? Well, it is indeed very little, and certain, uh, certainly seems to be uh, one of the Gaddafi siblings uh, with the lowest profile. That is certainly something that the government here say. Now, a government spokesperson, Musa Ibrahim, uh, said that, uh, in fact, this is uh, a young man who uh, was still uh, studying. He said he spent considerable time studying in Munich, Germany, in fact, hadn't completed his studies just yet. And one of the things that the Gaddafi re regime here uh, keeps emphasizing is that this uh, person, uh, Saif al-Arab Gaddafi, had absolutely no military significance whatsoever, that he was a private person, that he was someone who was not involved in any way uh, in the military campaign that, of course, is going on at this point in time uh, against the rebels in Misrata, uh, as well as in the east of this country. So there is very little that's known of him, that he was 29 years old, uh, that he was a student in Munich, Germany, spent considerable time in Germany uh, as well, and that apparently he was at that compound tonight. But again, uh, we have to emphasize no confirmation uh, from any other source except the Libyan government, certainly nothing that we're hearing from NATO at this point in time, really so. All right, Fred Blyken, thank you very much for the latest details out of Tripoli, Libya, where uh, a Libyan spokesperson uh, tells uh, the press that uh, the youngest son of Colonel Qaddafi, Saif al-Arab al-Qaddafi, 
and three of Colonel Gaddafi's grandchildren have been killed in a NATO airstrike at a house where Colonel Gaddafi and his wife were also at that time. They escaped, both of them escaped unharmed. However, his youngest son, uh, Saif al-Arab al-Qaddafi, and his three grandchildren were killed in that airstrike. You see a compound uh, uh, almost flattened. You see there are small pools of blood there, uh, visible where that computer is. And this is the aftermath of that uh, NATO airstrike that we are hearing. Uh, from the Libyan government. Uh, we have had no reaction so far, no confirmation from NATO, uh, no reaction official from the White House. This is the scene at uh, Colonel Qaddafi's Bab al-Azizia -Az compound where uh, supporters of the Qaddafi regime have gathered uh, to react to this news. We are working very hard, all of our sources, to find more details, to get more reaction from both NATO and the White House.